Here's another example of logarithmic differentiation. Um, there's a few applications we'll have for this, but this is a, a, an example of what we can do with it. We've got this nasty, nasty function that we now have all the skills, really, to, to differentiate, but we'd have to use the quotient rule, the product rule a couple of different times. We'd have to use a power rule, we'd have to use a chain rule. And there's a better way to do that, and that is <clears throat> to use the magic of logarithms. And so we don't take the derivative at the start. Instead, we take the, the natural logarithm of both sides. That's totally legal. We can always take the log of both sides. And the advantage of that is we get to use all the wonderful rules for logarithms, which convert complicated operations to simpler ones. And so, in fact, that's why logarithms were really first invented. So, for example, the biggest thing you can see here is the quotient. Well, the log of a quotient is the difference of the logs. And remember what happens with rules of logs, the way I like to say it is the operation moves, that namely it moves outside of the logarithm. Let's put that in the parentheses to make that clearer. It moves outside of the logarithm and changes. The operation moves and changes. Let me write that down. The operation moves and changes. Don't just move it out. This isn't a divide anymore. And don't just change it. Don't just like take this and just change it to a subtract without moving out. Neither of those would make any sense, and they wouldn't be correct. Now, here's a product of three things, the root, the cube root, the e, and the fifth power. That's going to become a sum. So log of cube root plus log e to the minus x plus log of x squared plus 1 to the fifth. Let's make it exact clear what the order of operations is there with parentheses. Minus ln, and I'm just going to leave this for a sec, but we can do more with that as well. And now x, a cube root is x to the one third. Well, a power turns into just a product. ln of e, that's the simplest thing of all. We'd love to see that because ln of e to the something, those cancel exactly. And so that's going to be plus or minus x. Well, in other words, minus x. Now here, that's a power. And this, a square root, that's a one-half power. And so that's going to be minus one-half ln of 2x minus 1. Now, don't go too far with this, OK? For example, the log of a sum, there's nothing we can do with that. What happens with these operations is when it, they move and change, powers, it's not posers, powers turn into products like this, OK? Products turn into difference, or turn into sums, and quotients turn into differences. Complicated to simple, complicated to simple. Sums are more basic than products, if you remember elementary school. Well, there's nothing more simple than a sum, really, for that sum to turn into. And similarly here, a difference, the log of a difference, you can't do anything with that. But it's okay. We've still made this much better. Why is this better? Because Derivatives love to see differences and sums, and they love to see constant factors. That's easy to take a, a derivative of. Whereas a fifth power, you need the chain rule and all that kind of stuff. Roots, you need power rule and chain rule. And for a product like the product of these guys, we'd need the product rule applied twice. Here, it's just a sum or difference. Now we take the derivative of both sides. Now, we've got to use the chain rule. This is an implicit derivative. d by dx of this guy. is equal to d by dx of this guy. Let me put that all in parentheses. And d by dx of ln y, you have to remember, well, that's 1 over y. It's 1 over what's inside, but then times dy dx. Because y is a function of x. In fact, it's this nasty function of x. But any time you take d by dx of a y, you've got to use the chain rule. OK, now the other side, 1 third times 1 over x. Now, that's just plain 1 over x because there isn't a y. There's no uh, meaningful chain rule factor. Minus 1 plus, we're going to get a 5 over x squared plus 1, but then times the chain rule. We're not completely out of uh, getting the, having to use the chain rule. The derivative of the inside, x squared plus 1, is 2x. And then minus uh, 1 over 2 times 2x minus 1. The 1 half is this guy. The 1 over 2x minus 1. And then a chain rule factor of 2. Okay, 
and we'll just clean that up. That's 1 over 3x minus 1. We could probably clean it up even a little bit more, but I'm in a little bit of a rush Whoops. to get to class. Uh, the twos cancel, that's kind of nice. Okay, so that's not dy dx, that's 1 over y dy dx. So what is dy dx? It's y times that. And that's a pretty good answer, it's, it's actually very compact, but if you insist on have, have everything in terms of x, then you just have to substitute back in this nasty thing for y. That's easy, it's just, you're just writing it, you don't have to do anything with it, you just have to write it. And so there's the final answer, all in terms of x. Nasty thing you started with, times something that's really not so bad considering how bad it could have been. And there's a nice way to get the answer to that problem.